Today we are going to be prepping the inside pages for our handmade sketchbook. So I have asked each one of you to purchase a 9 by 12 inch sketchbook, preferably with the mixed media style paper. You can do this assignment with regular drawing paper, but I personally prefer the mixed media paper just because it is much better for if you ever plan on painting inside your sketchbook or collaging. Um, using any sort of wet media, acrylic, watercolor, anything like that, the mixed media paper works better. But you maybe have purchased a sketchbook that has a spiral bound edge or this smooth edge where it's sort of hinged with glue. Either one of those will work for what we're going to do today. You are going to start today if you have a spiral bound by very, very carefully ripping out 30 pages. And you're gonna do that one or two pages at a time. And then once you've got your pages ripped out, there's usually a perforated edge for a spiral bound sketchbook. And just very gently fold those edges back and tear off that extra. And then you'll do that with each page. I only recommend you do this one page at a time and don't try to stack multiple pages because you're likely to accidentally rip your pages. So then you'll get them to this point. If you have a sketchbook that is um, has a gummed hinge here, those just very, very carefully, you may have to fold the paper back along and then very gently pull those pages out one at a time until you get 30 pages ripped out. So either way, get yourself a nice stack of 30 pieces of paper. You are then going to take each paper and fold it very carefully in half. Now this part is sort of time consuming, but very carefully fold those, make sure those corners match up, crease your paper, Crease it with your fingernails in between your fingers once you get it folded and set that off to the side. And then you're going to go through and do that for all 30 pages. Okay, so once you have your 30 pages torn out, you should have a nice stack. And you can neatly stack them together. If you give them a little tap and see what they look like. Now, for this example, um, I'm using very, very thin sketching paper so you can see the difference in how thin this paper is versus if you're using the mixed media paper, you're gonna have a much, much thicker stack of pages like this. Now what we're going to do next is create what's called a signature and the signature are the smaller the little groups of pages that are going to be sewn together into our book. Now if you are using the mixed media paper for that you're going to create a signature or a series of signatures with three pages per signature. However if you're like me and you are using the thinner sketch paper you are going to create signatures with five pages per signature. So I want to show you how we're going to make those. I'm going to take one page and open it up and take a second page and slide it in and open and then a third page and slide it in and then open. So I've got three together in one set. So if you have the mixed media paper, that's all you can really fit comfortably. Um, into a signature without it being too thick. But if you have thin pages like me, I'm gonna add two more and make it a signature of five pieces of paper together. So that is one signature complete. I will do that for all of my pages. Until they're all complete. So there's a second signature of five.
Okay, so once you have your signature pages all folded together, um, if since I'm using the thinner paper with signatures of five, um, that gives me one, two, three, four, five, six total signatures. But you will have, I think, 10 if you do signatures of three with the thicker paper. Um, but what you wanna do is you're gonna stack those up nice and neat together. Now, with the spine of your book, if you compress the thickness of all of those papers, you can have them be skinnier than your spine, but if you've got the thick paper, you don't want it to be thicker than the spine. So once they're really compressed and squished tight, you, don't, you wanna make sure that you don't have pages that are any thicker than the spine. And if they are, you can remove one and try it again until you get it to where it's no thicker than that one inch measurement of the spine. Now the last step that we're gonna to do today is we're going to measure out where the holes need to go um, for the sewing portion to, in order to get all of our signatures sewn together along the spine. So you're gonna take one of your signatures and set the other ones off to the side and you'll need a ruler and a pencil. Now, once I have this signature, I'm gonna open it up to the middle portion and measure the width across that center fold. Depending on the brand of paper that you've purchased, it should be either exactly nine inches, which this one is, or it may be eight and a half. Depending on which measurement you have, I'm gonna show you how to make your marks for both of those. So if your paper is nine inches wide, what I'd like for you to do, I'm gonna give you the marks that I want you to put a dot on if you have this lined up down here on your zero, right on the center crease line, you're gonna put a mark at the one inch, the two inch, the four inch, five, seven, and eight. So again, those numbers are the one inch, two, four, five, seven, eight. And what that's gonna do is give us three pairs of dots that are nice and evenly spaced that we're gonna use to sew our books. Now, if you have smaller paper, if the dimensions are eight and a half inches, I'm gonna show you how to measure that one out. It's a little bit trickier, but I'll walk you through it. So when I line this paper up, for example, it is only eight and a half. I am going to start down here at the zero and I'm going to put a dot on the one inch and on the two inch mark. So that's my first pair done. Then I'm going to take my paper and rotate it just to make your life easier. And I'm going to line it up on the zero again and put the marks on the one inch and the two inch. So now I have my two outside pairs of dots. And what I need to do now is figure out the middle and be able to put my two dots, my pair of dots in the center. So if I measure from this dot to this dot, that leaves me with four and a half inches. Half of four and a half inches is two and one fourth. So if I find the two and one fourth mark, I'm then gonna add half of an inch to the right side and half of an inch to the left side. By doing that and erasing that center mark, I've then perfectly distributed that third pair of dots. So that, that way is a little bit trickier if your paper is a little bit smaller because you have to deal with the fractions, but um, that sort of shows you how you would measure those out.